Okay, my top five favorite blade steels. I figured this would make an interesting video. So, first up, this is a Topps El Pioneero. It's in 1095 high carbon. This is my favorite blade steel. It's my favorite blade steel because it's pretty easy to sharpen, relatively affordable, holds a good edge for a long time, and basically it does everything that I want a knife to do. Um, there are a lot of steels that a lot of people would consider to be better or worse than this, but this has been the cutlery steel since the late 1800s, and it's lasted that long for a reason. It's really popular amongst uh, the outdoor community, bushcrafters, and that sort of thing, because it works. Um, when I was making knives, I used to get a lot of shit, because most of the knives I made are in 1095. Again, it's one of those, like, if it broke, don't fix it. My second favorite knife steel, I don't have an example of, but this kukri here is standing in for, because most kukris are made out of 5160. This one's not, but we'll pretend it is. Um, 5160 is a great steel for big blades, big cutters, machetes, swords, that kind of thing. It's great for that because while it can take a razor edge, that's not really what it's good at. What it's good at is holding a fairly sharp edge indefinitely. Um, it's one of those like, do you need to sharpen it? Yes, but you need to sharpen it a hell of a lot less than you do almost any other steel. It's a very tough steel. Uh, doesn't break under usage and shit like that. It's uh, spring steel like you find in trucks. I think it's pretty cool because of that. However, those two steels are pretty much mostly found on fixed blades. So when it comes to pocket knives, we have to go into the, the weeds a bit. My third favorite steel is uh, S30V, as represented by this uh, Buck 110. So 110 Slim Select Pro. Uh, I really like S30V because it holds a really good edge. You basically don't ever have to sharpen it, and uh, it doesn't rust at all which in a pocket knife can be a concern with like sweating and whatnot. As such, it's my third favorite steel. I've had a lot of knives in that steel. Um, I don't think I've ever seen it rust. And I've basically never had to sharpen any of them. It's like, what do you use your knife day to day for? It's one of those things that like you carry a lot, but use it very little. So, Unless you go out there, like, looking to damage your blade or something like that. Like, I've had to sharpen S30V before because I damaged it on something, but not because the cutting shit made it dull. My fourth favorite steel. This is a uh, OTF, like the Joker had in The Dark Knight, made by Dynamic Designs. This is in 154CM. And it's my four favorite steel. The thing I like about 154CM is that it tends to be a little bit cheaper than S30B. It's really easy to sharpen. It holds a good edge. And I like affordable knives. S30V, for whatever reason, people put a price tag on it usually. And... Uh, 154 CM doesn't usually quite carry that price tag. It's considerably cheaper on most knives. You know, there's exceptions to that or whatever, but in general, I don't like overpaying for knives. And when you get into super steels and shit, I kind of cut it off at S30V and really prefer even 154 CM if it's priced right. If they're the same price, I'd rather have the S30B. But more than usual, a uh, 154CM blade is like 100 to 150 bucks, and an S30B blade is a couple hundred bucks. So as long as the prices are like that, in general, I'll take the S30, I'll take the 154CM. Uh,
save the money if it's offered. Although there's a lot of shit that just doesn't come in uh, C, uh, 154 CM and uh, you kind of forced to buy it in S30V because that's what they make it in. My fifth favorite, I debated on for a bit. I was kind of torn between a few steals, but I think given the nature of the market now, it has to be D2. This is a Rat 1 in D2 tool steel. This is a $40 knife. And there's a whole bunch of knives in that $40 to $50 price range that are in D2 tool steel. And at that price, you can't beat this steel. Um, I like it as much as I like 1095 or 5160 in fixed blades almost. So to give me you know, ready access to pocket knives in that steel in cheap prices, they're usually Asian produced knives at that price point, but you know, who cares? I will say that uh, Benchmade makes some knives in CPM D2 and charges out the ass for them. And I think that's kind of fucked up. I get that CPM D2 is more expensive than D2, but like it doesn't perform any better. I'd rather they just make the knife in D2 and subtract the, the difference in price. Um, D2 tool steel is the, the steel that won World War II. All of the like guns and tanks and bombs and shit that we made during World War II had tools made of D2 tool steel making them. It makes a really good knife and... Uh, if you're in, looking for a budget steel, you you can't do any better than D2. It will rust, but it doesn't rust as easily as 1095 or 5160. But that has its advantages and disadvantages too. Like it is more difficult to sharpen. In fact, it is the hardest steel to sharpen on this list. So there is that. But that's one of those things too. Like it's so hard to sharpen because it holds an edge for a really long time. And it holds an edge for a really long time because it's so hard to sharpen. So those are my picks. I thought about this for a while, actually. More than I probably should. Um, I'm not really a steel snob. As you can tell from my list. Um, I think in general, the knife industry puts way too much fucking energy into what steel your knife is made out of. When you go to buy steel, one of the things you'll find out if you're making knives is that basically there's some price tiers, but most of the steels are basically the same price. Are you going to pay more for S30V than you are 1095? Yeah, but not enough so to justify the cost of like a Spyderco or Benchmade. Those knives are more expensive because of the way they're made and who makes them and where they're made. The price of the steel is a factor in there, but I can assure you that if Spyderco made knives in 1095 high carbon, they would still want 150 to 200 dollars for those bitches. I doubt it would lower the price at all. You know, and the same thing goes for, uh, you know, Benchmade and their CPMD2. They're using CPMD2 to try to get you convinced that it's so much better than D2 when it really isn't. I would call the steels about equal. Um, but they know that if they just use regular D2... They'll get all sorts of flack for the fact that their knife's $200 in D2. They get all sorts of flack because their knife is in CPM D2 and $200. And in my opinion, that's... Yeah, they probably should. At that price point, you can get knives in S30V. And if you're just buying it from a, you know, a user in perspective, wouldn't you rather have the knife that doesn't rust and doesn't ever need to be sharpened? Yeah, you probably would. And that being said, D2 is still on my list of favorite steels, but it's on my list of favorite steels price considered. 
if D2 wasn't such a prevalent cheap steel and so much better than the other cheap steels that are available, I don't think it would have cracked my top five. The knife industry is awash with idiots that don't know anything about steel, in my opinion. And I think you reach a point of diminishing returns. Like, I've been looking at some blades here lately that are in, you know, S90V, S110V, or whatever. They're not that much more expensive. I don't think they're going to perform all that much better than S30V. That's just, you know, my opinion. So why spend the extra money on it? It's only like, I think it's $30 to get the Spyderco Military and S110V versus the Spyderco Military and S30V. I guarantee you S110V is harder to sharpen. It's one thing I can guarantee you. Is it going to perform any better than S30V? Based on my experiences... How can you improve upon near perfection? Which is kind of where I view S30V as sitting. It's like for a pocket knife, it's nearly perfect. I don't think there's any way you can improve on it, so why am I going to spend an extra $30 to have a knife that's more difficult to sharpen? And more difficult to obtain, and yada, yada, yada. Like... It doesn't make sense to me. What do you think about steels? What's your favorite knife steel? Tell me in the comments below. I'll see you guys later.